Coming up on Good Company, the last in our special series on the Epcot Center, that new billion-dollar entertainment complex in Orlando, Florida. Also, we'll travel to see what's going on in Winona, Minnesota. I'm Steve Edelman. I'm Sharon Anderson. On today's show, our job expert, Kirby Stannett, has some advice for women who are re-entering the job market. And the conclusion of our special series of reports on the Epcot Center. Today, we'll explore nine different countries in World Showcase. A few weeks ago, Lana Turner was in the Twin Cities, and our field host, Gary Lumpkin, talks with her. And on our Twin Cities 100 Travel Series, we'll see the highlights and the history of Winona, Minnesota. All that is just ahead on Good Company. From the Twin Cities, it's Good Company. With your hosts, Steve Adelman and Sharon Anderson. With roving reporter Gary Lumpkin and the Good Company Company. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. This afternoon we are going to conclude our special series of reports on the Epcot Center, which of course is that new creation by the Walt Disney people next to Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Epcot, if you haven't heard by now, stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. And a lot of it is devoted to showing the public the latest ideas in science and technology, things that, that uh, are going to make our world easier and better to live in in the future. Now that's part of Epcot Center. That is the part that is called Future World. Well, the second part is an area called World Showcase. And what it is, it's an area where you can see the food and the architecture and shopping of nine different countries. This is what it looks like. You can visit France, Mexico, Germany, Italy, Japan, Canada, the United Kingdom, China, and America. And of course, our field host, Gary Lumpkin, stopped in each one. Well, you may have heard of the movie Around the World in 80 Days. Well, hang on to your hats, because we're about to do it in a lot less time. First stop, France. Ooh la la. And of course, no visit to France would be complete without a little French pastry from the Boulangerie. Great place to practice your high school French. Comment allez-vous, madame? Bonjour, monsieur. Je vais très bien. Comment allez-vous? Oh, oui. Est-ce que vous avez visité le pavillon français? Ah, uh, oui. Est-ce que vous l'avez aimé? Mm. Oui. Avez-vous oui. vu le film? Of course, if you've been out of high school a few years, it's a little tougher. Oui. Est-ce que vous avez reconnu Paris, oh, oui. la Côte d'Azur, oui. oui, oui, la Tour Eiffel? Oh, oui, madame. Oui, madame. Fortunately, you don't have to speak French to be understood at this sidewalk cafe. You don't have to know it to enjoy the Palais du Cinema or movie theater either. One of the big attractions here is the 200-degree film on France. Now, it's scored with classical French music and very little text, so that no matter what language you speak, you can still enjoy it. Across the street from the theater, Les Chefs de France restaurant is operated by three famous French chefs who each take their turn in the cooking. Now there's also another sidewalk cafe where you'll find impromptu comedy acts that change the street into instant theater. Now the next stop on our tour is the United Kingdom, which isn't that far from France, but we got here without crossing the English Channel. As you can see, the streets look like London. And everywhere you go, Disney craftsmen have added to that feeling. From the thatched roof of Anne Hathaway's cottage to the stone exterior of the Great Hall. And even the gift shops look authentic. And that's probably because each of the showcase countries features products made in that country. Now, the one thing that Disney wizards couldn't copy was the cool British climate. But customers inside the Rose and Crown pub were beating the heat in their own way with a bit of British cheer.
by now, you may be looking for a country with a little slower pace. So what could be better than Japan? Japan has a variety of shops and restaurants. But we decided to try the Mitsukoshi, where the food is prepared right at the table. <laughs> In fact, you might even say, right on top of your table. After lunch and before you leave Japan, you might want to stop by and visit the Candy Man. The Candy Man is actually Masaji Terasawa. He came from Japan to perform the dream fantasy, a 2,500-year-old art which combines sculpting with candy making. Now, the craft originated in China, but was brought to Japan by the son of a Japanese man who helped to build the Great Wall of China. At one time, there were many artists performing this work, but today, there are only five remaining in the world. The last stop on our tour is Italy. Since the showcases are spread out, you can take a bus or walk from country to country. Now, everywhere you look, the feeling is definitely Italian. Many of the landmarks here are reproductions of famous originals, like this fountain. Nearby, you can shop in an Italian market or just enjoy the people watching. And there's really great detail in the architecture in all the countries. Now, this wall in Italy is only several months old, but thanks to the touch of Disney, well, it looks like it's been here for centuries. Anyway, the bride, she says the magic word one more time. Bride. And nothing happened. So the baker, he laughs even harder. <laughs> well, it may not be classical Commedia dell'arte, but the Teatro de Bologna, or the Theater of Bologna, draws large crowds with their mix of slapstick and audience participation. Everybody. You know, most of the people working in the countries here are actually native citizens of that particular country. Like, I bet she's from Naples or Rome or something like that. Somebody. Excuse me, I'm sorry. What's your, what's your hometown? Buffalo, Minnesota. Buffalo. <laughs> well, Disney said it is a small world, right? Uh, see you right. next time. Buffalo, Minnesota. Minnesota, uh huh. That's right. That's a right. Have you been there before? <laughs> ah, they do have college kids from all over the world working in those exhibits, by the way, so you can practice your language if you want to, if you, if you know a foreign language. And I think it's kind of interesting that one country you won't be visiting there is, uh, is uh, the USSR, is Russia. Because one of the rules was, if you had an exhibit there, you could not talk politics. Politics could not be part of it. And the Russians said, well, that's impossible. Politics is very much a part of our culture. Disney World said, sorry. Hmm. So there is no uh, Russian exhibit there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We'd like to thank the people at Eastern Airlines and Jim Brock here in the Twin Cities that set that up for us. Also, the Epcot people, uh, a man named Dave Simpson, was very cooperative. Now, we understand that this Epcot Center, and I'm sure at this point you've heard of it quite a bit, is going to be a major destination from the Twin Cities for families looking for a place to go. And so uh, I hope we gave you a comprehensive view of if you go there, what you will get. And we'll continue to take a look at destinations around the country that you might like to go to. We'll fly our people there so you can take a look at whether you want to do it or not. Coming up next, we are going to be talking about the latest in Halloween fashions, right? Right, and then we're going to be traveling a little closer to home. We're going to Winona. Stay with us. It's a week from Sunday that we are going to be having trick-or-treat night. And what we're going to show you now are a couple of costume-type things that are available just in case you don't feel like making your own costume. These are the latest things available in the Twin Cities. Now, what I have on is called a Pac-Man <laughs> mask. And even though you can't see in, I can see out. Kind of. <laughs> can you really? Well, not, you know, I can see out enough so that if a car was coming at me, I could see it. <laughs> Coming Maybe. straight at you from <laughs> the front. Well, anyway, I can see, I, I know, because I was trying to read my notes here about it, and I can't really read my notes. Um, <laughs> I, I guess, I hate to say this, I can't recommend this mask, because I, you know, it's it really kind of, it's hard to see out of. So wear it there. to school, but, but don't wear it out trick-or-treating. Well, you might wear it just to a party, quickly have it on, take it off. But it costs uh, $6.50, and it's available at the Briar Patch, okay? Mm. You, know, you can see through it, it's just not really clear. 
I'm having my own private experience behind this mask. What are you doing? This, well, this is very strange. It looks like a normal mask from the front. But actually, as I look through it, I'm seeing through prisms, seeing through rainbow colors. I have blue, yellow, red all going on as I'm looking out into the world. It's kind of <laughs> interesting. Hey, there's a party back here. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Uh, once again, I don't know if I'd recommend it for outside because you wouldn't really know if there were lights coming at you. It's so maybe it's the lights in here that are doing this. Yeah. But it's fun. This is also from the Briar Patch, and this costs a dollar twenty-five for this rainbow mask. It's called. And I have something here that's kind of fun. This is a magic wand. How does this that work? This is five fifty from the Briar Patch. You turn on the light, and then you make circles with it like this. Let me take off my mask so I can see it. And the colors are supposed to change on the end of the wand. Are they changing? I can't quite tell because we have our lights on. Let's see. There they go. There they go. See? They're changing color. They said, see if you can hold it still. And okay. Maybe that'll do something. You see? Huh. Yeah, now they're white. <laughs> These are. That's, that's kind of fun, huh? Yeah. Different colors. Anyway, that's available at the Briar Patch. It's 550, and batteries are not included. Interesting. Yeah. We have uh, members of our staff and our interns who are dressed up in costumes just for you, and they are about to come out to show us the latest uh, and other things available. Why don't we start out with our first one here? <laughs> this is Mary Ann Purvich, who is an intern with us, and she's wearing the Wicked Witch of the West costume. <laughs> uh, there's only one hat like this left. It's 375, and it's at the Briar Patch. We're going to return it right after the program if you'd like to see that. The Witch Knows. $2.50, also Briar Patch. Taffeta Dress, $24 at March 4th. The wig is $15.98. The room is $5.95. And if you want to blacken out your teeth, $1.49 from Sears. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. That's fun. Oh, <laughs> and this is Rachel Valle. She is wearing the Easter Bunny outfit. This is a combination of things from different stores. The ears are from March 4th. They're $10. The tail is also from March 4th. That's $3. It moves very nicely. The whiskers are from the Briar Patch, and they're $1.25. You do an excellent rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Rachel. Rachel is the daughter of Sandra Valle, who's one of our associate producers. Ah, Hello. the cat. This is Carol Sagasaur, who's an intern with us. She's doing her black cat. Now, the cat costume includes the headpiece, the chest fur, and both those are $20 together at March 4th. Her cat mask, by the way, is from the Briar Pad for a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> we have some real naturals in our staff, don't we? I know. I think Thanks, these characterizations Carol. are really making these outfit work, outfits work. Whoa. Look out. Here comes Count Dracula, this alias. This is the program director, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is Bruce Carlson, who's also an intern on Good Company. And his... Oh, oh, his outfit is from all different places. The cape is from March 4th. It's $20. Oh, the clown white that you see on his hands and on his face is from the Briar Patch. That's $2. Those charming vampire teeth from the Briar Patch for $1.50. And the stage blood <coughs> from Briar Patch for $2. Oh, and here we Thanks have our B. This is Lisa Savak, who's an intern on our staff, wearing her bumblebee outfit. Uh, the B kit. Includes wings, chest piece, and head piece from March 4th, and the combination is for $20. The bee is kind of running out of steam, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, she's back again. Great, thanks, Lisa. That was her audition for Saturday Night Live. Uh-oh. No. Uh-oh, the devil. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> devil like we've never seen before and yes <laughs> the devil satan lucifer whatever you want to call him his cape is his cape is twenty dollars his tail is six dollars his his <laughs> this looks like a devil you might run into on hennepin avenue his, <laughs> his headpiece is nine dollars complete with horns his fork is two dollars they're all from march 4th and then of course that mask i think that mask is a little upside down isn't it devil no? no? That's the way it goes? It's a devilish way to wear it? What is it? What's that? Oh, and look who the oh, devil really surprise. is. Oh, Now we got it. No. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Of course. 
We all know that's Gary Lunt and our field host. And by the way, yes, all these stores, you. we'd just like to reiterate those Briar Patch and Victoria Crossing, March 4th at 8th and LaSalle in Minneapolis, and Sears Midway on Rice Street has these various things, and there they are. That's what Halloween is going to look like for 1982. Thank you. Now it's time for our travel segment that we call the Twin Cities 100. These are various destinations that you can go to from the Twin Cities that are within 100 miles, so it's a perfect day trip. Today we're going to Winona, which is known as a beautiful river town and a great place to go Christmas shopping because you get some very good deals on sweaters. Our field host Gary Lumpkin went to Winona just a few weeks ago, and here's his report. Gary? Today we're going to visit Winona, Minnesota. Now, it's a very popular place, especially this time of year, because of the beautiful scenery. I'm at Garvin Heights Park right now, and if you like great views, take a look at this one. Now, legend has it that an Indian princess threw herself from this cliff rather than agree to a marriage arranged by her father. Kind of like the original Lover's Leap. But I tell you, it's over 500 feet straight down from here. And, well, I'm not into leaping. I'm into hiking. And Garvin Heights has plenty of trails to hike on. Now, there are also several state parks a short drive away, and I'm told that the fishing is excellent around Winona. So whatever you decide to do, don't miss a chance to just sit down and enjoy the scenery. Now, besides Garvin Heights scenery, here's something else you'll want to see in Winona the Winona Knitting Mills Outlet Store. Now this part of our tour is really no big secret, since people have been coming to the Knitting Mills Outlet Store for years in search of bargains. And no wonder, there's some great buys here. I saw this same sweater in a Twin Cities department store for a little over $40, $21 here. But you know, those same people miss the best part of the whole show. So when you visit, take the tour of the actual knitting mill. Because watching these sweaters being made is almost as much fun as buying them. Now you know how long it takes to sew a buttonhole. Well, not the way the mill does it. Far from the mill, downtown Winona features several restored buildings from Winona's steamboat days. Now, if you decide to take a walking tour of the architecture, you just might want to stop in at the Historical Society. Their exhibits do a great job of recreating the steamboat era. Now, after visiting downtown, if you're ready for a little lunch break and you want to break the burger and fries routine, drop into the hot fish shop. These costumes are part of a display of Polish dolls and folk craft in the lobby of the hot fish shop. Now, the restaurant is usually pretty busy, so while you wait, you can enjoy these different displays. And, oh, yes, here's something else a little out of the ordinary. A man-eating clam. Now, you don't find a man-eating clam in too many restaurants, but wait, there's more. You're about to see a man-eating clam chowder. Hey, you bet. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Here's your lunch. No, great. Thanks again. I'm having the house specialty, walleye pike. Mm. It's really good. The Hot Fish Shop. Great place to stop for lunch or dinner when you visit Winona. And while you're in town, there's another place you'll want to see. The Julius C. Wilkie. The Julius C. Wilkie is a replica of the actual boat that used to stop here during the steamboat days. You know, the steamboats were a colorful part of Winona's past. Mark Twain even came here several times. So while on board the Wilkie, I talked with Dr. Younger, who can remember riding on riverboats like this one. Well, there seemed to be something going on every second, of course, and that's true of all steam-operated machines. I mean, you've got the pistons moving, the steam coming out of the blowpipes, you've got the black smoke coming out, the chugging of the engines, you know, and the vibration going through the boat, the calliope playing on the back, 
Uh, a great deal of activity. It was very much alive. Yeah. Was there uh, entertainment as well? Oh, my, yes. Of course, the boats, the excursion boats that came up here had Dixieland bands. And some of them would get stuck on the sandbar, and they'd dance out here until they could, two or three in the morning, they'd get them off and bring them back in. Now, the Julius C. Wilkie will be open next summer, and it'll be a great attraction. But in the meantime, it's a great place for us to come and listen to the Winona Barbershoppers. The barbershoppers perform year-round in Winona, and when the full group of 50 shows up, it just might be the world's largest barbershop quartet. Now, just a short distance from the Mississippi and the Wilkie is this peaceful setting, the Big Valley Ranch. Here, you can take a short riding lesson if you want, and then ride a horse out on the ranch's trails. So bring your boots, because like we said earlier, there's just some great scenery in the area, and it's even better if you're on horseback. You'll even see old Sugarloaf Mountain there, Minnesota's only registered mountain. It's a lot of fun, and it's something the whole family can enjoy doing. Whoa, see you next time. Let's go get them. Yeah! The message we Beautiful. Yeah. Winona, great place to go this time of year, especially. Man, Gary Lumpkin gets to eat in every piece he does. <laughs> yeah, he's a great eater. I've seen eating twice today already. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Just in case uh, you didn't know, we do these Twin Cities 100 travel features every Thursday. So if you're looking for a place to go, Thursday is the, is the time to watch. And now Lana Turner is 61 years old. And in just a minute, we're going to find out what's on her mind after 45 years in show business. <gasps> oh, we didn't go map. to the map. That's right. I forgot the map. Let's take a look at the map. How do you get to Winona? Well, it's southeast of the Twin Cities on Highway 61, and it's roughly 100 miles and quite an easy drive. This time of year, I think the, the uh, leaves look very nice on the way down there, so it's a good time to, to go. It's, as we said, about 100 miles to get there. Travel time, roughly two hours, and we figure it'll take basically two-thirds of a tank of gas. So there it is, Winona and you might want to give it a try. Good place to go Christmas shopping for woolens. Oh, yeah. Right. I didn't know that. Did you? Did you get that kind I of I didn't. Uh -uh. I was talking to people yesterday, and they said they go down there every year to buy sweaters for their families. Mm -hmm. Great Christmas presents. Okay. Right we'll back. be right back. Stay with If you are a woman who's thinking about re-entering the job market, one mistake women sometimes make is going into an interview and pleading ignorance, saying, well, I don't know the answer to that because I haven't, I haven't been in the job market for a while. That's according to our job advisor. And he says there is no excuse for not being well informed. Here's Kirby Stanett with some advice. A while ago, I interviewed Jane Seeker, a woman who is re-entering the job market. Her resume said she had worked as a secretary bookkeeper about 15 years ago, before marriage and kids. When she came into my office, my first impression of her was positive. She was pleasant looking, well groomed, and confident. Watch what happened after she introduced herself and sat down to talk about a job. Jane, what can I do for you? Well, my children are old enough to take care of themselves now, and I'd like to go back to work. What kind of a job are you looking for? I don't know exactly. I've done secretarial work, but I have a college degree. Maybe you have some ideas. You don't know what you want? You expect me to plan your career? Would you be interested in a word processing job? I'm not really sure what word processing is. Wow. Are you ever out of date? How's your typing and shorthand? I don't know. I haven't done either for 15 years. But I used to be good. I'm sure those skills will come back. Not on my time. This is a profit-making organization, not a retraining school. Obviously, I didn't hire Jane. And I didn't tell her what I thought about the way she presented herself. But I'll tell you, she came across as being out of date. Update and practice your skills before you go out hunting for a job. 
Read trade publications. Learn the language of modern business. Remember, modern companies hire modern employees. Kirby Stanett, always good advice. He's on Good Company twice a week. And now, Steve is going to be talking about birds. That's right, Sharon. We have a time with the winter coming where you might be thinking in terms of, hey, wouldn't it be nice if the birds visited our home? Kay Deming is with us today, and Kay is going to give us a little bit of advice on how you can get the birds to come to you, what's the best feed, what are the best feeders, and that kind of thing. Would you welcome, please, Kay Deming. Thanks, Steve. You have to admit this segment is strictly for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is your experience with birds? Well, I've been feeding mm -hmm. birds for about five years, and uh, our yard is certified by the National Wildlife Federation as a wildlife ha habitat. Oh, we are number 2118 if anybody cares to check. <laughs> you're serious? I'm serious. Well, how much bird feed would you say per year that you're feeding to the birds? We go through between three and 400 pounds, depending on how bad the winter is. Wow. That's a lot of bird feed. <laughs> now, you brought this along. What's the idea here? Well, the idea of this is what do you give the person who has everything or the bird who has nothing? Mm -hmm. After air, <laughs> after air, the first thing that birds need is water. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money and you'd like to attract wildlife to your yard, provide water. Of course, in Minnesota, that's a problem because it sort of freezes around here. Mm -hmm. so, so this what is you a do, warmer? Yes, this is a thermostatically controlled warming device. You put it on an extension cord, mm -hmm. you put it in your bird bath, and if you like, you can put it on a timer so that it turns on in the morning and off in the evening. And the directions that come with this little mm -hmm. number say that if a bird even lands right on the element, it won't hurt them. How much are these? Uh, this runs $35, but that's a lot less expensive than a lot of bird seed if you don't want to bother with feeding. And it really works that all you have to do is have water and the birds block Absolutely. There. Interesting. Because if you keep water out year-round and they know it's dependable, they'll come to it. Okay. If you really want to get into feeding, I brought some different samples that we have here ranked in order of expense, starting with the cheapest and going to the most expensive. Well, let's start with that then. Okay. Whole oats only run about $6 per 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money, this will attract things like starlings and sparrows and uh, what I call the rough birds and junk birds. <laughs> but other things like blue jays will come and eat if they find out that the pickings are pretty good. If you want to get into some of the better birds like chickadees and the finches and cardinals, you can feed things like sunflower well, seed. Well, let's start with the cracked corn since I have okay. that up. How, how, what's that for? Cracked corn, you attract, well, lots of squirrels. The sparrows eat it. Um, the rough birds, again, are the ones that eat that, like grackles and uh, starlings. Okay. So uh, a lot of people don't consider those welcome visitors to the yard. But once you get birds coming to your yard, other birds will say, hey, that's a good place to stop. <laughs> Boy, you know, uh -huh. if, if you don't go there, you're going to miss a tree. Then, if you want to, you don't want to spend um, uh, a lot of money on, on things that are going to attract the rough birds, you can get into sunflowers. Um, now, there we have a whole lot of variety. We have striped sunflower, we have shelled sunflower, we have black sunflower. This is black sunflower seed, which is higher in oil, which the birds need in the winter what, for their what diet. What kind of birds does that attract, sunflower? Chickadees and uh, cardinals, mostly, and the better birds, like finches. Okay. Safflower attracts basically the same birds. Okay. And I think that must taste like chocolate cake to them because they really, really like it a lot. And birds will come from miles around to get safflower. And? And the peanut hearts, which are spilling all over the counter, right. um, is something that's very valuable as a winter feed because it's very high in fat, and that seems to attract everything. However, we're getting into the expense of $23.33 for 50 pounds, so it's getting more expensive as we go up. And this one? Thistle atta attracts the, um, doesn't attack them at all, attracts the small finch-type birds like um, red poles and pine siskins and uh, chickadees don't bother about it so much, but goldfinches, if you can get them in the city, do come to thistle, but here we're talking about $70 for 50 pounds. Whew. So maybe you could throw them a steak once in a while and have <laughs> the same thing, I don't know. Now you brought with you a, a number of different kinds of feeders. feeders. What really is the best feeder to buy? Okay, if you were going to invest in only one feeder and didn't want to spend a lot of money for seed, I think I would recommend this little satellite feeder. You can fill it with sunflower, with safflower seed and hang it in a tree, and um, it attracts chickadees. And mm -hmm. they're delightful to watch. Your sparrows have a hard time trying to hang on here and perch and pull seeds out because they're not a clinging bird. But 
they're fun to watch because they can do it if they're really hungry. So you said this is the least expensive? No, that's not the least expensive, but it is in terms of keeping rough birds off your feeders. Okay, that what's, feeder what is runs the, about twelve dollars. This is twelve. Right. Okay. What's the least expensive? The that least you still expensive recommend? would be this thing, which is a, a little cage type device. Mm -hmm. I can hold it for you. Then. Okay. And you can put suet or suet cakes, which have meal and cracked corn and so on in them. You can throw old donuts and bread and cake in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you do is you close this little bugger up and you put a clamp on it like this. I haven't been doing my hand exercises. That's really Want some help? interesting. There. Okay. And hang it from a tree or clothesline or wherever is handy, the uh -huh. eaves. And the birds will come and hang on this and eat through the metal mesh. And this is coated with a rubberized sort of a, a compound so that when they put their little faces through there, if their eyes would touch the wire in the winter, it won't blind them. Okay, and now how much is this one? This thing only runs six dollars, and but you can put all your leftovers and scraps in it. But you Apple don't cores. think it's not as safe for the birds? Yes, this is very safe because it is coated with rubber. Okay, but I thought you said other birds could come at, you know, this one was Forget oh, okay. Any, we'll just, okay. Yeah. any kind of bird can hang on here, but usually okay. only, your, only your clingers will. Woodpeckers and chickadees and uh, that sort of clinging bird will hang on there. Okay, we only have time for one more, so okay. choose the one you'd one really more. like to tell us about. I like this one a lot. Okay. If you hang this up in a tree, um, this protects the seed from the weather, and you can get all kinds of perching birds on here as well as the clingers. And the little birds, for some reason, seem to really like this design very, very well. And uh, it's fun to watch them through this, and it gives them a little shelter when the weather's rotten. If you would like more information about what to feed birds and the various types of articles that are available, Kay has made up a sheet, and you can send in a self-addressed stamped envelope to us here at Good Company. Put, if you would, on the top, Bird Supplies, Good Company, 3415 University Avenue, St. Paul, 55114, and we will send you that list from Kay. Yeah, well, would you want to add something there? Yeah, keep those feeders clean, mm -hmm. and once you put seed out, make sure that you keep seed out all winter or they'll starve. They'll oh. depend on you. So it's a real commitment. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you, Kay. You're welcome. Yeah, we look forward to seeing the birds this winter. It's a kind of a great pastime. Me too. Kay Deming. <laughs>
and you can get it by writing in. But first I want to, you know, I, I took a look at this thing because I thought, well, let's see. If they know what's going on in the Twin Cities, maybe they'll know what's going on in the rest of the, uh, the country. What do they advise? Well, under free attractions, we open it up and we find St. Paul. And they say in St. Paul you can go to the St. Paul Cathedral, the City Hall and Courthouse, Como Park, uh, Indian Mounds Park, Minnesota Historical Society, et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. Okay. Now under free campgrounds, they have in Minneapolis, did you know this? On Highway 70, there's a campground that's free. No, I didn't. Yeah. And How far north? It says uh, on I-35, uh, north of Min Minneapolis-St. Paul on I-35 until you come to the uh, State Highway 70 near Pine oh, City. Oh, sure. All right. It's free? Okay. Well, that's good to know, isn't it? There's a free campground right here. These books are available. You have to send in for them, and we'll give you the address right now. You write to VMPI. Box 1289M, Clearwater, Florida, 33517. And if you write and you mention good company, they will give you a special discount, okay? Now, when you order the books, uh, you will get two for $18.50 rather than one, I mean, rather than two for $19.90. So you save just over a dollar if you mention us. Each, each book, if you buy individu individually, is $9.95, roughly $10 a book, okay? So, okay. interesting. Yeah. Great. Those are our good bets for today, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. This is Jane Hessian. She's representing the Children's Museum of Minnesota, and you have what coming up, Jane? This Sunday evening from 5.30 to 8.30 at the Hennepin County Government Center, we'll be hosting a Toast to the Twin Cities, which is a gourmet food and wine tasting featuring 29 of Minnesota's, or the Twin Cities' finest restaurants, including Pronto, 510, uh, Kikugawa, Siati's, Leanne Chin's, and many, many more. Ah, and then the uh, proceeds from this go to the, the Children's yeah. uh, Museum? Yes, it is a benefit for the Children's Museum. Tickets are available at the museum. They're $17.50 per person, $35 per couple. Okay, once again, when and where? It is this Sunday evening, October 24th, 5.30 to 8.30, Hennepin County Government Center. Good. Please call the museum for tickets. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That is a worthy cause, too, one of the few in the country that is, uh, we have our own children's museum. This is John Rivard in an outfit. What is this, John? This is a French voyageur outfit. Mm -hmm. And you are representing what? I'm uh, president of the La Société Canadienne Française de Minnesota. You want to say, let him say that. French Canadian <laughs> Society of Minnesota. And you have coming up what? We have coming up uh, French Canadian Heritage Day. It's been proclaimed by the governor October the 23rd. And in the evening, we are going to have a concert at St. Thomas College at 8.30 of some French artists from Montreal and Quebec. Uh -huh. It's called Salut à Québec, Salute to Quebec. And the uh, starts at 8.30, it's $5 a ticket, and we want all the French Canadians in Minnesota not only to come to the concert, but to join our society. All right, and is that the same number to call if you want to join the society, 755-5936? Yes. Right. right, right. Okay, and the concert, once again, is when and where? It's at St. Thomas College, October 23rd, this Saturday, at 8.30. All right. Good luck with that. Uh, merci beaucoup. Ah, merci beaucoup as well. <laughs> Thank you for being with us, John. We also have two other groups I'd like to mention. We have people here from the Young at Heart group, our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Maplewood. Where are you? Hello. Also, people from the Pleasant Grove Homemakers. We want to welcome you, and thank you for being with us. Hi. Steve? Our soap opera reporter, Barbara Holmes, just returned from New York City. While she was there, she talked with Nina Cortland, actress Taylor Miller on All My Children. And coming up on our next Good Company, we will be featuring that actress, Taylor Miller, from All My Children. And comedian who worked in the Twin Cities for a while, Gail Mathias. She was also starring on Saturday Night Live, is going to be here. She now has a new show called Laugh Track, and we're going to talk to her about her career. Also, not too long ago, Sharon had a chance to talk with Ted Knight of Too Close for Comfort. He actually can be a very serious guy, which he was off camera, and that will be on tomorrow's show. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye. While visiting Epcot Center, accommodations for the crew of good company are provided by the Hotel Royal Plaza, located near the Walt Disney World Shopping Village in the resort community of Lake Buena Vista.
Travel arrangements to Orlando for the staff of Good Company were provided courtesy of Eastern Airlines, the official airline of Walt Disney World. Eastern, America's favorite way to fly. Night for Too Close for Comfort on Thursdays. And I'll be on Good Company with Steve and Sharon at 3 p.m. Join us on Channel 5. Hi, I'm Ted Knight for Too Close for Comfort on Thursdays, and I'll be on Good Company with Steve and Sharon at 3 p.m. Join us on Channel 5. Hi, I'm Ted Knight for Too Close for Comfort on Thursdays, and I'll be on Good Company with Steve and Sharon at 3 p.m. Join us on Channel 5.